So one of the fastest growing literary genres is the genre of woke leftist children's books. It's like you, you walk into the bookstore now, go to the children's section. It's like being at an Antifa rally or something with all these books. The most common subgenre, though, of woke children's book is the kind that pushes gender confusion on children. There are many adults in this country who want your child to be as insane and confused as they are. And that's why they write books like this. This one is called I Am Jazz, um, uh, allegedly co-authored by Jazz Jennings, who was, at the time this was written, a, a, a kid, a boy, who identifies as a girl. But really, I think we can safely assume that the real author is, uh, is Jessica Herthel, who's the first author listed there. I'm told by the internet that Jessica Herthel is a straight ally, whatever that means. And she travels the world and she's spreading her gospel. This is her gospel. She's spreading it and speaking to schools and other groups. Because, because yes, this book is read to kids in, in school. Uh, so that's the background on it. We'll uh, we'll crack it open and, and see what's inside, I suppose. I have to warn you, usually when we do videos like this, I like for it to be sort of funny, but this is a brainwashing tool for children, and uh, it, it makes me too angry to say anything funny about it. So I, I, I'm just going to read it and scream like a crazy person. That, that's probably the way this is going to go. All right. I am Jazz. For as long as I can remember, my favorite color has been pink. My second favorite color is silver, and my third favorite color is green. Here are some of my other favorite things. Dancing, singing, backflips, drawing, soccer, uh, swimming, makeup, and pretending I'm a pop star. Most of all, I love mermaids. Sometimes I even wear a mermaid tail in the pool. My best friends are Samantha and Casey. We always have fun together. We like high heels and princess gowns, or cartwheels and trampolines. All right, so you see what's happening here. They're setting the stage. Uh, explaining why Jazz is actually a girl. Jazz is really a boy, but they're trying to explain, you know, this is why Jazz is actually a girl. Uh, and of course he's a girl, because he likes mermaids in the color pink. Th this is supposed to give us an indication of Jazz's true gender. Except the problem here is that we're also told that there's nothing inherently feminine about the color pink or mermaids. The, the left for years has been insisting that it's actually not feminine to wear a dress. There's nothing, that's what they've been telling us. There's nothing feminine about it. These are just uh, social constructs. They don't really mean anything. And now they say, if a boy wears a dress, he's so feminine that he must be a girl. So we went from, it's not feminine to wear a dress, to if you do wear a dress, it's so feminine that you turn into a girl because you wore one. So this is completely incoherent, but obviously the children who are, who are being subjected to this drivel um, they don't know that it's incoherent. And that's the left's ideas of gender are so stupid and absurd uh, that they have to indoctrinate you when you're five years old before you're informed enough to notice what's really going on. We have a lot more to read, unfortunately. But I'm not exactly like Samantha and Casey. I have a girl brain, but a boy body. This is called transgender. I was born this way. Sure, right. C couple problems here, though. First of all, I mean, this is really the biggest problem. It makes no sense whatsoever. You, see, your, your brain is your body. Okay, so drawing a distinction between your brain and your body makes no sense. It's the same thing. Your brain is your body. It's like drawing a distinction between your limbs and your left arm. See, if you have a boy body, then you have a boy brain. Do you know how I know you have a boy brain? Because you have a boy body. That's the way it works, by definition. But what else could it possibly mean for a, for a boy to have a girl brain? Especially because, again, we've been told that there's no such thing as girl brains and boy brains. The left told us that for decades. And now they're saying, oh, you know what? Actually, there is such thing as a girl brain, and somehow it can end up in a boy's body. We don't know how it ends up in there. It just does. When I was very little, and my mom would say, you're such a good boy. I would say, no, mama, good girl. At first, my family was confused. They'd always thought of me as a boy. As I got a little older, I hardly ever played with trucks or tools or superheroes, only princesses and mermaid costumes. My brothers told me this was girl stuff. I kept right on playing. Notice how we keep going back to mermaid. So mermaid's a fictional character. This has nothing to do with someone's gender whatsoever. My sister says I was always talking to her about my girl thoughts and my girl dreams and how one day I'd be a beautiful lady. She would giggle and say, you're a funny kid. Okay, so not only do we have 
uh, girl brains and boy brains. We have girl thoughts. What's a girl thought? You know, here's the thing. I don't know what a girl thought is, I guess, because I've never had one because I'm not a girl. If the term girl thought means anything, it must be the thoughts that a girl has. So you can't pass, possibly have a girl thought unless you are a girl, which Jazz is not. Sometimes my parents let me wear my sister's dresses around the house, but whenever we went out, I had to put on my clothes again. This made me mad. Still, I never gave up trying to convince them pretending I was a boy felt like telling a lie. Then one amazing day, everything changed. Mom and dad took me to meet a new doctor who asked me lots and lots of questions. Afterward, the doctor spoke to my parents and I heard the word transgender for the very first time. That night at bedtime, my parents both hugged me and said, we understand now, be who you are. We love you no matter what. This made me smile and smile and smile. Okay, they, they understand now. So what convinced them? What convinced you? You, you didn't understand before, like your four-year-old, or a, a toddler comes along and says, I'm a girl. And you're the parents. And at first you thought, well, no, you're not. But then he kept wearing pink clothes and he, and, he, and he watched the movie Little Mermaid one too many times. And you said, by golly, I guess he really is a girl. Well, what do you know? It is no, it is no different than if your, your three-year-old son comes up to you and says, I'm a doggy. And you say, no, nah, I don't really think you are a doggy. And then he gets down on his hands and knees and crawls away. And you say, wait a second. Did you see what he just did? Well, he must be a dog. No, there's no way a human could do that. There's no other explanation. It's a miracle. He's a, he's a spiritual dog. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a dog's brain inside a boy's body. Yes, that, that, that's it. How absolutely useless and feckless do you have to be as a parent? to let your four-year-old convince you that he's really a girl. How useless and feckless do you have to be as a parent to let your four-year-old convince you of anything? I have kids, okay? I have never been convinced of anything by a four-year-old. A four-year-old has never said anything to me that made me go, huh, you know, you raise a good point. Actually, I changed my mind. That's never happened to me ever in life. Is it because I'm stubborn? Uh, maybe so, but I think it's because I'm an adult. Okay, they're, they're four. They don't know anything. There is nothing they can tell me about anything that will make me change my mind about anything because they don't know anything because they're four. Okay, like they just started walking a couple of years ago. They're barely, they, they, they're just now at the point where they could go to the bathroom on their own. So, no, um, you, you don't say to your four-year-old, be who you are. You know why you don't say that? Because your four-year-old doesn't know who he is. He's four. Doesn't know what a boy is. Doesn't know what a girl is. That's why you're there. You're the parent. You're supposed to explain. And when your four-year-old four boy says, I'm a girl, you know what? Your four-year-old boy has no idea what a girl is. He literally doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what that thing, it's just a word to him. It doesn't mean anything. Mom and dad told me I could start wearing girl clothes to school and growing my hair. They even let me change my name to Jazz. Being Jazz felt much more like being me. Mom said that being Jazz would make me different from the other kids at school, but that being different is okay. What's important, she said, is that I'm happy with who I am. Being Jazz caused some other people to be confused too, like the teachers at school. At the beginning of the year, they wanted me to use the boys' bathroom and play on the boys' team in gym class. Well, what? I can't imagine why. Could it be because you are a boy? But that didn't feel normal at all. I was so happy when the teachers changed their minds. I can't imagine not playing on the same team as Casey and Samantha. Even today, there are kids who tease me or call me a boy name or ignore me altogether. This makes me feel crummy. Then I remember that the kids who get to know me usually want to be my friend. They say I'm one of the nicest girls in school. I don't mind being different. Different is special. I think what matters most is what a person is like inside. And inside, I am happy. I am having fun. I am proud. I am jazz. You see, it's exactly what I said. Uh, it just made me angry. Now I'm just mad. This video was a mistake. Like, this stuff in this book, it's not just nonsense, right? I mean, it is nonsense, but it's, it's harmful nonsense because kids are being brainwashed into it. And their lives are being 
destroyed. You know, Jazz Jennings is actually, this is a tragic story about Jazz Jennings, in, in fact. If we lived in a sane society and, and there was a book about Jazz Jennings, it would be a tragedy, is what it would be. Now, I think Jazz Jennings is an adult now. Uh, his whole life has been ruined by his horrible parents and by the horrible, deranged lunatics who have done this to him. So the, the whole theme of this book is be yourself, right? Be who you are. And I used to think that be yourself was the dumbest slogan imaginable because who else are you going to be? I used to think that growing up when I was told, well, uh, just be yourself. And I would say, well, who, right, but who else am I going to be? And what other, what other option do I have? Unless I'm a, unless I'm a shapeshifter, I, it, it seems like that no matter what I'm doing or what I'm being, I'm being myself. So it not really helped me out much by saying that. But now I see that this is actually good advice because this book is a perfect example of a child who has been trained to not be himself. Himself is precisely who Jazz is not being. He is being anyone but himself because he has been conditioned to hate himself. So our message to a child who struggles with his identity, our message to a boy who, who struggles to accept that he is a boy, should be, be yourself. Actually be yourself. And you are a boy, and it's wonderful to be a boy. It's a beautiful thing to be a boy. You should embrace that. Love it. Love yourself. Be who you are. You aren't a she. You're a he. That's okay. That's good. Be that. That should be the message. That's the loving, true, real message that you give to a kid. This is garbage. This is noxious, poisonous, filth, and garbage. So buy this book for firewood if you want. Just don't read it to your kids. That's all I can say.